What's up, everybody? It's your boy Showtime Doctor back on the Knight's Chronicle hunt. Um, so I'm seeing a lot of people either starting the game for the first time or they're coming back uh, thanks to the uh, very good improvements that Netmarble's made for the game. And a lot of you really don't know what's what, what's good. There hasn't really been an updated tier list in a while. And so who should you invest in? Who should you go for? And I'm going to tell you guys, I'm back to the game for about three weeks now. I don't know everything, okay? So this is just a I will try to help you video. And hopefully there are people in the comments that can help out as well. You can always come in the Discord or just comment and I'll uh, answer whatever questions I'm able to answer. But right now, I'm going to go over the heroes that I know are very good. And then tell you the ones I either have no experience with or for whatever reason. Like all these guys right here have no idea. No at all. The only thing I know is Haspile. Um, if you team him with Electra, I believe everybody gets 30% more health. It might just be all fire units. I forget how it works. Let me see if it says it in his kit here. Yeah, it might have been a thing with just Electra. Well, we'll get to Electra later, but I know there's some type of buff like that to where they get 30% more health. I just forget what the uh, modifiers are. So we'll get into it now. Morrigan, um, she's still pretty good, but she's no longer like super top tier DPS like she used to be, but still really good. You can still use her in PvP. Uh has a good costume, etc. Callie. Callie's still one of the better uh, wind DPSs in the game. She's probably outclassed now by Awakened Ruby. But overall, still a solid unit uh, for DPS in the game. Now, Aemon. Aemon has fallen off since I used to play uh, before I quit. Whatever it was, six, seven months ago. Eight months ago now. November -ish was when I quit. Um... Not necessarily a top tier tank anymore. There's people that are better than him overall. But Eamon's still really good for uh, his dodge rate and his resolve. He's still useful in a lot of places. And he also has a buff to hold light DPS as a leadership skill, which is really good. And still a good tank, just not a uh, top tier as he used to be. Nyx. Nyx is mostly serviceable as uh, PvP one-shot teams. For those who remember Nyx, she has a costume now, by the way, that improves her a lot. But I remember her ulti was basically with her costume on. The more debuffs that a team has on them. Well, I'd have to get the costume buff. But basically, the more debuffs that were on people uh, when she does her ultimate, she ended up doing more damage. Was pretty much how it went. So, uh, useful for PvP, but not necessarily, uh, you know, decent for PvE, but not necessarily the greatest. Janus, Janus, unfortunately, is somebody that is linked completely to their skill upgrade. So, can be really good if you got all the skills upgraded, but otherwise, not that good a hero, unfortunately. Uh, Verdandi is still top tier water DPS, and especially a terror with regard to uh, PvP, because Verdandi, she can block, resolve, and resurrect, which are two mechanics that uh, increase your dur durability, in, in uh, especially PvP, but PvE as well. Uh, crits really hard, gets a buff that basically makes it so that she crits on the next attack when she gets hit, uh, percentage chance. And overall, just a really good hero. So Verdandi's still top tier as far as water DPS go. Not the top top tier but still right there so we'll go to the white knights uh damien after his uh, awakening awakening is a new thing if you haven't played the game for a while to where it starts giving you silver stars on top of the purple stars so uh increases more passive buffs and the last buff always does a uh I think it's usually an ability mod. So let's see here. The ability mod for him, recharging barrier. 80% chance to remove enemies damage absorption at the start of the turn. So kind of like how Ruby's thing is with removing debuffs. 80% chance to grant damage immunity to the caster for two turns upon multi-strike and counter-attack. Decreased damage taken by 50% if the caster has Buster Sphere. Uh, Buster Sphere I think is probably a self-stacking. Yeah, self-stacking buff. 
So uh, from what I've heard, I haven't done it myself because I haven't built Damien up, but from what I've heard, Awakened Damien, you can take two of him, like a friend unit in him, and like a Rue, and basically destroy, you know, you could take a tank as well, but you could basically destroy Cowley's dungeon just with a Damien now, or two Damien's. Don't even need like a Morrigan or anything like that. Uh, Marduk is a good tank now. You can argue he's about second, second or third best. Doesn't have an awakening, but he's actually required tank for one of the dungeons that up until recently was uh, paywall lock thanks to costumes. But now that you can buy the costume uh, for him and Ramu, it actually makes it a lot easier. Um, I know they changed his skills around. I just I just haven't built him, so I don't know exactly how. But he is a tank worth building but only for one particular dungeon overall. But having a useful water tank for uh, other things isn't necessarily a bad thing. A Rebecca, from what I hear, is still hot garbage along with... Uh, sorry, everyone, I know you get free Rebeccas. She's not terrible, okay? I'm not saying she's bad, but considering all the stuff that they tried to do to buff her with the costume, she's still not that great, unfortunately. Can still do good damage, but... Just the way it is. Sinclair's good for curse or debuff PvP one-shot teams. Mm. Uh, that's about it. Ramu, like I was talking about earlier, probably the second best healer in the game right now with her costume. Uh, you get Ramu's costume and her skills change and become significantly better. She has a chance to grant uh, it what's called basically debuff immunity uh, at the end of her turn. Passive heal at the end of her turn, has a self-resurrection, can resurrect up to three units when you upgrade her skill all the way. Uh, has a solid heal that decreases the duration of debuffs by two turns when it's enabled all the way. Just really solid unit, stun on her one. Great healer there, so if you happen to got a Ramu, congratulations there. Uh, as far as the Dark Knights go, Nemesis... She's really good for PvP right now, and I haven't actually looked to see if, if she has a costume or anything, but a pretty good fire DPS. She gives herself a shield every time she hits. Uh, just a pretty good hero overall. I wouldn't say top tier, but uh, depending on what you're doing, PvP, she's pretty good. PvE, she's pretty good depending on what you're doing. Her ulti basically makes targets unable to be revived in an AoE. That's pretty good. And she has a self-stacking, or not, yeah, actually it is stacking, critical chance buff. You can get up to 40% and increase her speed and get some charges of Dark Orb, which is the thing that helps her do more damage. And she has unable to be revived on her one. And then she also, like I said, puts up a shield 20% of max HP for a turn when a Dark Orb is acquired, kind of a chance thing. So increased her uh, sustain and survivability. Mary, from what I've seen, I know she has a costume upgrade. Um, she's only useful for the most part in one-shot PvP teams, AoE. Uh, has a couple mitigating things like a self-resurrection that can help her stay up. Uh, Demos, it's arguable you could put Demos at like 4th or 5th best healer. Uh, overall, thing that makes Demos really good is he has that shield that basically makes it so that not only does it heal a certain percent, but... Everyone is guaranteed to evade an attack. And he also gets a revive component to it after you get it to uh, rank 3, which is pretty awesome now. They gave him that, as well as a passive revive for whoever falls first. And then as a buff, uh, if you upgrade it, it can buff 3 units, removes all debuffs, and grants Dark Warrior, which basically is an attack buff, as well as abnormal status immunity. And as one's just the typical heal heals water units more. Pretty good unit, uh, really needed for something, such as a uh, huge AoE attack dungeons, boss dungeons. Good solid unit overall. Now Ashley has become the number one DPS in the game for most things, thanks to his awakening. Uh, his awakening, for those who don't know, is skill three also affects the two enemies adjacent to the target. 90% chance for caster to gain Veil of Phantasm, which is an instant dodge. If the caster applies ebony wounds to a target well this his skill three when upgraded basically a 480 so 480 hitting three people very rare in the game the only other person that kind of does something similar that i can think of offhand is verdandi 
uh, with that damage percentage. Also removes all buffs and chance to stun for three turns. So just uh, significantly, that's why the cooldown's so long on it. And he also has a dot called Ebon Wounds he puts up. Uh, can stack up to 10 times 20% of his attack each stack, so up to 200% of his attack, which is ridiculous considering that you can basically put five stacks on people for free with his two and it's a self-stacking crit buff crit damage and crit chance for three turns he's just a ridiculous hero he breaks all pve content right now and the guy is just a monster so if you can get him with like some buffers and solid tank to keep him up ashley bar none is the best dps in the game right now and should be the number one unit that you awaken uh, assuming you're either starting out a new account or you haven't awakened anyone yet. So, for the most part, yeah, Ashley is super broken right now. Also, you should get his costume that gives him, I believe it's double attack. And he will just wreck face. You'll be surprised how crazy he gets. Uh, Britain, and you know, useful for AoE clear teams, farming teams, as well as uh, one-shot PvP teams. Has pretty good. Only problem with Britain is his very slow so you kind of have to buff his speed, which takes away from his damage. Uh, Decane, that's another unit you can farm. Generally, most people now, they use him for fodder, but you can also put him in with the one-shot uh, dark PvP comps with Nyx. Uh, I forget her name, but whatever the cat girl's name is, along with uh, uh, Sinclair and some of the other units that are like that. Electra has actually become the best tank in the game now, and she used to have that mantle early on in the game before they released Aemon and, uh, I forget his name, the wolf guy. But uh, when you awaken her fully, she gets this Undying Flame, so becomes Fire Incarnate for two turns at the start of the wave. Fire Incarnate basically means, well, we'll get to it here, it's easier to explain when I show you another skill. Um, guaranteed to reflect damage equal to 250% of defense when hit. So if you got her taunt on lockdown, people are just doing monstrous damage to themselves every time that they're hitting her while she's fire incarnate. Uh, grants protection to all allies, excluding the caster for two turns at the start of the battle. Protection means if someone goes to hit another unit, they're going to hit the tank that granted them perception. Uh, Perception. <laughs> protection. So Ian was the name of that werewolf tank. He was actually uh, puts up a lot of protection too. But basically, so for the first two turns of combat, uh, the enemy team is going to be killing themselves trying to hit her. <laughs> so if you got her defense on point and you got your gearing down, it's just a monster tank that can keep you up on almost everything in the game. Uh, with the exception of, like I mentioned, that dungeon where you need Marduk etc but this unit's just solid you can get her a costume that increases her damage uh her three 70 percent chance to taunt for two turns along with decreasing attack and inflicts penetration damage on all enemies when you skilled up all the way for two you can also use this to become fire incarnate it gives a shield to everybody that absorbs one uh instance of non-penetration damage and has a chance to burn the enemy team as well which is pretty good. You need Burn. Burn has actually become a significant debuff because there's a lot of resers that they can't res if they have Burn on them. Uh, a lot, along with some buffs that are affected by Burn. And uh, Blazing Touch, this is just her thing. Now, check this out because a lot of you, they kind of change this a little bit. It used to be that you attack and you have a chance to hit the units adjacent, so on the right or left. And now it's basically almost 100 percent or it is 100 percent if you scaled up all the way to adjacent enemies 65 percent chance to taunt for two turns so her two turn taunt comes at rank three but overall like i'm saying just a really solid unit build her pv uh excuse me her defense as much as possible and she'll just wreck for you Heinrich, I do not know about, unfortunately, so I can't really say anything about him. I have heard that he is useful on things, I just don't have one, so I have no experience to tell you about with that. Let me make sure I got everybody. Okay, and then lastly, uh, we'll go into some of all the rest of these SSR heroes, and I got a couple SR units I will go into. And then we'll be done. Uh, Mina, for the most part, she's mostly for PvP. She can also be for that one-shot PvP team. 
Uh, Meryl, she has a uh, epic quest that upgrades her. Actually, not even sure what her upgrade is afterwards, to be perfectly honest. Something with a costume. Yeah, this is the only costume, so... Well, whatever, she gets some type of upgrade. But the cool thing about Meryl is she's all AoE damage. So... She's really good for your uh, PV or not PVP, uh, your farming teams. Because she's always hitting at least three people at once, and she has a five target as well, so you can get her damage up. She'll do pretty good for you for clearing dungeons. Uh, Cheshire was the kitty unit I was talking about with the PVP one-shot teams. A uh, reason that Cheshire is so good for those teams, uh, she has a five target on her on her uh, her three and so if for whatever reason after you've done all your one shots that you haven't killed them all she has a good chance to charm uh, two enemies for a turn so that'll buy you more time to do some more damage or heal up or whatever you have to do and her two is a hundred percent chance to cast Veil of Phantasm which is an instant dodge no matter what on three units on three allies and you can give it to them and it also buffs their damage so this is usually what you do on the first turn unless you got another way to uh, buff their damage. Strike preparation to deal a critical strike. So it's an instant crit for whoever you give this to. <clears throat> as well as cast Cursed on all enemies. Which Curse is a synergy uh, with Nyx and other units to where they do additional damage as long as Curse is on the, on the, uh, at a debuff on the enemy units. So, a uh, useful unit, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say, she's a great support, and she can do a little bit of damage as well, but she's a great support. Uh, May, you get May for free in PvP, but to be perfectly honest, you should be spending your PvP tokens on Awakening Essence. So, decent unit, she can be a tank buster, but there's better units in the game to do that right now. Uh, Esna has an Awakening as well. We'll read it here, this is her Awakening power. 80% chance to remove abnormal status immunity from all enemies at the start of the turn. So kind of a direct counter to units like Ramu. Uh, increase attack by 50% if the caster has Esna's Revenge. Esna's Revenge is a buff that she gets whenever she's hit. Uh, I think it's like a 50% chance. And I think she might also have it at the beginning of rounds, depending on what you're doing. And ignore 70% of damage taken from all elements except wind element. So... She becomes, except to her counter class, a super tanky unit that dishes out loads of damage. She's also the only character in the game, as far as I know, they might have added characters since I've seen it, that has Mental Seal. Which, Mental Seal is basically when it's on your unit, if you do anything, no matter who you are, how much health you have, 50% of your life goes away like that. So it could be a counter attack, it could be a direct action. If you do anything but defend, 50% of your life is gone. Uh, that can be mitigated with certain things, such as Able Shield. Uh, but overall, for the most part, it's uh, it sticks to most units. And she's just a really solid uh, unit that does penetration damage on everything that she does, pretty much. So, Oh, I didn't realize she could put Mental Seal on with her. Oh, yeah, she, yeah, I did. Okay, I just forgot she could put Mental Seal on with her one. Yeah, so she's a good unit. She regens a little bit whenever uh, she's under 30% health. So Esna is definitely... You could, if you aren't doing Awakenings and you already got Ashley and Electra, she's a possible candidate depending on how buffed you have her for your third Awakening. As is uh, Ruby, who we'll get to in a second, and Kane and Damien. So uh, Karen. Karen is still really good, but there haven't been any significant buffs to her since uh since i used to play a uh, good thing about karen her two short cooldown and basically grants an instant turn to whoever she uses it on as an ally that's pretty cool her three also removes all debuffs which is very nice can also remove a buff from the enemies and her one's just your basic attack heal um in general, she has Cozy Abundance, so if someone dies instantly, she brings them back to life, assuming they're not burned. Which, remember what I mentioned about burn earlier? This is one of the things that it counters. And overall, just a really good unit. Throws out heal over time, randomly. Uh, I would put her probably fourth, third or fourth best support healer overall. Um, 
And then there's Ruby. So the things that have changed, oops, sorry about that. Things that have changed about Ruby, Ruby is now an awakened unit and Ruby's awakening is as follows. 30% chance to make the caster's turn come next when attacking, okay? 100% chance to increase the caster's attack by 50% or five turns. Stacks up to two times. So essentially, with as many turns as as many attacks as she does, she's always going to have a 100% buff, attack buff, no matter what. Also increases her multi-strike chance by 40 if skill 3 is on cooldowns. So the way that Ruby works, or 1 decreases the cooldown for skill 2 at a 60% rate if you got it buffed. Her 2 decreases the skill cooldown of skill 3. And her skill 3 is just a hard-hitting attack that ignores defense if target doesn't have any buffs. And whenever she gets cooldown reduction from one of her skills, or uh, also when she gets hit, she gets cooldown reduction, 20% chance. Um, she's healing, she's reducing cooldowns, and she basically has a chance to keep taking additional uh, turns. I've had uh, Sheik my friend who plays this game and has been playing it for a while that has a fully awakened ruby she told me that her ruby goes like four times in a row sometimes because this proc so many times so ruby is one of the ridiculous units in the game along with removing buffs from defense and attack type units so really awesome unit here uh, all single target damage but if you need one dps she actually outclasses cali now once she's awakened which is a very uh not an easy thing to do now, Kane recently got an Awakening as well. Uh, we all remember the old days of Kane being the most buff unit in PvP. I remember his Untamed Nature and his Damage Absorption Shield that worked like Able Shield. Well, now, if you notice, when he gets his Awakening, Underworld Beast, the caster's Untamed Nature and Damage Absorption, Untamed Nature buffs uh, damage, basically, and Damage Absorption basically functions as a shield that restores damage. Uh, it can basically be, be up for multiple turns at a time, is the way that it goes now, because it cannot be removed. Both buffs cannot be removed. And now he inflicts additional damage equal to 100% of damage dealt upon landing a multi or critical counterattack. He counterattacks all the time whenever Untamed Nature is up. You see here, guarantees multi strike and counterattack. So now that it's up all the time, he's just becoming a freaking monster. And it, it usually procs whenever there is some type of uh, heal effect that goes off from regen runes to active heals. Uh, his skill set's very much the same, though, uh, from you guys that remember Kane back in the day. Basically the same, but now his shield can be up for like three and four turns at a time. Unless you find a way to deal with it. Uh, the only ways to deal with it, people like Ruby, like we just looked at, where they dispel certain buffs. But now this buff can't be dispelled. So you're going to have to wait till it expires naturally, which means depending on how many regen effects are going off, he can be a real pain in the butt. So Kane has become a much better dark DPS. Ashley still outclasses him. But overall, especially in PvP, Kane is actually a really good uh, sustain unit now. Assertic, from what I've heard, is still garbage, unfortunately for him. A Rue has... Okay, everyone should have a Rue. I'm not saying not to have a Rue. Rue is still a great character, and you need her for certain things. But she's been significantly nerfed in the sense of a lot of the newer dungeons, they make her one of the penalty units. So you can't run her in those dungeons. And... So you do have to keep that in mind. But overall, she's still a solid unit to build up. Has a res that buffs attack by 50%. Her one can heal like crazy and remove buffs. And her two, one of the good things, grants abnormal status immunity as well as remove all debuffs and be a fat heal for up to three units. So still, still a solid character. Just buyer beware. Uh, Ellie's still Ellie. They need to buff her. Abel has a costume. I believe they just put it on the 400 crystals. They only got like three costumes. They still got a patch to do that. Um, thing that makes Abel crazy is her. Her. Haha. <laughs> I still feel for it after all these years. All these years. His. Two. Applies butterfly wings and become their immune to damage over time. Two turns. This applies to him. 
and he applies the shield portion of it to the ally standing next to him. So it focus it uh, acts like cane shield to where all the damage that they take is absorbed as heal for the most part, unless they have something like poison on them. Um, and then once you upgrade him to 60 and get his full buff, the two wings of protection is up at the beginning of every round or every wave, so three waves at the beginning. So it's a really good way to heal and keep units alive that are squishier is just put them next to Abel. Yeah, Abel's pretty good. Abel also has a big uh, heal, abnormal immune statity or status immunity to all allies for two turns and pretty fat heal, 70% health. Once you get his costume, makes him even more ridiculous, grants him uh, extra skills. And it's actually hard to look at. Oh, okay, so he gives Dark Warrior to everybody. Dark Warrior is like a buff, uh, attack buff, I believe. His two Fallen Angel's Wings. Damage over time immunity increase the caster and two adjacent allies. So now it becomes an attack buff as well as a defense buff once you get his costume. And then his one's still basically the same. Not sure if his passives change or not. Yeah, he gets Dark Warrior for everybody now. That's interesting. That's cool, because up until now, Dark Warrior was exclusively... Well, not exclusively, but a mostly Demos thing. So Abel is, uh, with the costume, probably one of the better overall supports in the game right now. So if you get an Abel, be happy about that. A uh, Sid, you have to farm Sid's dungeons. Sid's still a useful unit for things, but his percentages are a lot lower now, and he hasn't been buffed significantly in a while. Advantages to Sid, though, are you can six skill up all his skills really quick. Back in the day, Sid was arguably the best uh, support in the game. It was like him, Rue, and Karen. And he's fallen off quite a bit since then, but still, he's worth farming if you can farm him a great unit. Alifa's uh, pretty much the same. I'm not sure if they gave her a costume or not, but still a solid unit. Great fire buffer. Every time she crits, she does a multi-strike. So, great unit. Has... Arguably the best best buff in the game, although now it, it is actually arguable now that I'm reading some of this other stuff, but increase all allies attack by 40%, critical strike damage 40%, decrease damage taken 40% for two turns. Fully skilled up on her too. Can also taunt a little bit if you need a taunt. Uh Tayo, still a good water DPS. Uh still one of the easiest dungeons to farm in the game if you're if you are early in your account, I recommend that you watch uh, mine or like Cash Brian or someone else's Tayo guide. You can farm Tayo with really low level units if you have a certain setup and uh, like a friend unit, Cordelia and SR, etc. So. Uh, Jacqueline, I don't have that much experience with Jacqueline, but I know she is very good uh, when DPS. I'm just not sure how good, but I know she's not top tier, but she's still pretty good. Uh, Edwin also got an Awakening. And to be perfectly honest, I haven't looked at his Awakening, so let me look at it here. 85% chance to change all enemies' HP to that of the lowest enemy, excluding bosses. Oh, wow. At the start of the turn. Obtains three Barrier Signets when the caster is counterattacked. Okay. Barrier Signet is his self-stacking buff. Oh, am I wrong? Let's see. Signet, 70% chance. Three variant signets nullify damage taken when attacked. That's right, he has a damage nullifier. So basically, whenever he gets counterattacked uh, and his turn goes, then next time he's going to nullify all damage taken. So that adds to his sustain. <clears throat> um, this Edwin works very differently from other characters in that if you look at his one verdant signet on two enemies for two turns at the start of the turn. 30% additional damage and activates a special based on the type of enemy he's attacking. So if he attacks an attack type, it gives a Melancholy. Melancholy basically makes it so that buffs are not applied, including things that like Cane Shield, uh, Able Shield, etc. So you can still DPS them even though they have those immunities up. A defense basically makes it so that he ignores defense on defense tank heroes. Uh, supports, he silences them for a turn. And then hybrids, units like Ellie, Leafa, uh, decreases their 
his cooldown by one turn whenever he attacks them. So depending on who you're fighting and what you're doing, he can be really effective or not as effective on some things. Um, so he's kind of a tricky character to play, but he's still a really good unit if you get him built up right. One of the better holy, not only DPSs, but uh, kind of utility characters, if that makes sense. Because he does, he does debuffs, including his unique debuff, and he does uh, some buffs uh, for his own defense. And then as you see here, he can throw out a attack and critical strike chance buff as well for himself. So, pretty solid unit there. I only have one copy and I haven't built him up, so... Looking into it. Claude, unfortunately. Claude actually needs a buff. Um, used to be one of the better tanks, and still not a bad tank. Uh, the cool thing about Claude is, when he does his ulti, he has a ch pretty good chance to cast Looming Death, which is basically, you die after two turns, no matter what. Well, almost no matter what. There are some ways to get out of it. Um... And then grants the caster Ghost Girl, which is basically damage immunity to everything that's not penetration damage, needs to be dispelled. And I forget, it. I think there was something that happens if it was dispelled. But overall, his one hits multiple units. Uh, you can get his top percentage up. He's still a good tank, it's just they need to give him like something else, like an Awakening or something right now. Uh, Ian, you can get free Ian's from Guild Battle. Uh, throws out protections like crazy. Pretty good uh, wind tank overall. Has a self-heal as well as an, a stun. So overall pretty good, but I wouldn't say I'd still build Electro over him if I was building a tank. Uh, and then you could throw him on like third, second best tank, depending on what you got. Uh, Cynthia. Now, Cynthia recently got a buff. Uh, it used to be you couldn't run Cynthia with people that had a uh, debuff dispel automatic, like Rue or someone like that, but they just buffed her now so that 100% um, chance... Oh, wait, no. Where is it? Oh, that's weird. I guess they haven't detailed it yet. Well, anyways, I know this is in effect, so... Oh, here it is, yeah. 100% chance to silent the ca silence the caster, which is Cynthia, for two turns if the caster's debuff is removed. So basically, if Rue takes her turn after Cynthia and Cynthia has silenced herself, and Rue, at the end of her turn, auto-dispels it, Cynthia will silence herself again for two more turns after that. And the reason... It, it might sound kind of weird for you newer players. The reason that you want Cynthia silenced is because her one ignores defense whenever she's silenced. And her one hits hard as hell if you got her geared right. So, and she can auto silence herself with her three and her two. And just a really good unit overall. Uh, PvP, burning through tanks, really good unit. And does pretty good DPS on uh, PvP, PvE rather. Because uh, she she basically auto crits and you can easily get her crit or multi strike and her counter to a ninety percent, which is what I heard is the new max now. It used to be seventy or eighty percent, but you can get all her stuff to ninety percent now. So she has ninety percent chance to multi strike, ninety percent chance to counter attack when she's silenced, and get her crit chance up. So you can just be a, like a little monster, and she's one of my favorite units in the game. I love Cynthia. A uh, Christian. Christian has an advent. A little bit harder to farm than Tayo's dungeon if you are new to the game. But Christian's still a really solid unit. Penetration damage on everything he does, so he ignores most damage immunities. And one of the harder hitting alts in the game. And he has a uh, immunity shield he gives himself whenever he's healed and on occasion when uh, he crits. And he throws out heal over time buffs, and he re reduces debuffs on light de uh, light units in his party at the end of his turn by one. So overall, just a super solid hero. Not quite top tier DPS for Holy anymore, but he's still pretty significantly... You could give him like top three at least. Um, Isabel, I don't know much about... I do have her, I just haven't used her, but I know she's not like super, super top tier. Uh, Elizabeth, she just got an awakening this last patch. 
but we'll read it here. Phantom Creep. Cast Crow Phantom equal to 30% of attack on all enemies for three turns and removes all abnormal statuses from the caster at the start of the wave. Weakens the attacker for two turns when the enemy is affected by Crow Phantasm, or excuse me, when an enemy affected by Crow Phantasm attacks an ally. Apply status reflection to the caster for two turns when an enemy affect. Okay, so I'll break this down for you in Jargon. Crow Phantom is a self-stacking buff that she, or a debuff actually, that she, it might not be stacking, but I know it's a debuff she puts on enemies. And we'll get to what it does in a second, but depending on if it's on an enemy or not, she can put Weaken on them, which basically lowers their attack damage. And then she can reflect abnormal statuses, apparently, which are debuffs, as long as people attacking are affected by Crow Phantom. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff there. Uh, Crow Phant Phantom. We see here. Uh, it's a debuff that does 30% of her attack damage on the enemy. So. Oh, she was the one that did that, huh? I forgot about that. Okay, Weaken is not an attack debuff. I was wrong about that. Weaken is decreased target's max HP by 90%. So she can do this to tanks, and it will destroy enemy teams because your tank that had, say, 40k life now has 4k life. So now you could just focus down the tank and <laughs> done. I wonder if this can be combined with that other unit that makes it so that... uh everyone's HP or multiple people's HP becomes whoever has the lowest uh, person's HP. That's interesting. I'm going to have to look up that synergy. Maybe that would be pretty crazy. Because then you could just saw through a lot of teams like that if that does work. Huh, I might have to put her as my third awakening now. Anyway, so uh, every time the enemy affected by Crow Phantom counterattacks... Oh, it had to be on counterattack. That's right. Okay. So she puts weaken up when they counterattack. Increases damage to enemies affected by damage over time effects by 70%. So really solid, solid if you're running her with the uh, damage over time. Allies. Okay, but then this makes it so that whenever they attack an ally, so not a counterattack. Oh, that's fucking nuts. Wow. I'm going to have to put her on my short list to build then and do that experiment. I wonder if that can be done. I, I completely forgot which unit it was that had that. I'm going to have to go back and look. Uh, Miss Attica, she's a solid support. She's also the only dark SSR support, I believe. Um, She does a bunch of things, but basically uh, everything that she does increases the the sustain for the party as well as puts on some debuffs on the enemy to make them attack weaker. She has a revive. If uh, they kill an ally before they kill her, it, she puts out an AoE stun at a 60% clip here. And then I remember emergency response basically makes it so that people take less damage, as I was saying. Now I believe she has a resurrection. Yeah, here it is. Resurrection on her too. So overall solid support unit. Um, you can run her in your dark teams whenever you're doing like world boss and stuff and it'll help keep people up and debuff the enemy. Uh, Nikita. You can farm her dungeon probably around mid late game now for most people that are starting new accounts. Um, does lots of multi-strike damage. Uh, whenever she multi-strikes, I think she hits 80% harder or something like that. Gives herself adrenaline so her speed goes up faster. 50% harder, my fault. So, uh, does lots of AoE damage overall. Pretty solid unit. Uh, I wouldn't give her top tier, but once again, she's an advent unit. So the advantage is you can get her skills to rank 6 very quickly. A Taran, from what I've heard, how she's gone in the meta... She's good for some things, but she's not top tier at what she does. But she can break taunts on herself, which is pretty nice. Uh, Lionel, from what I've heard, actually became a... I don't want to say meta tank, but... Um, he is a useful tank for some things, like world boss. Uh, all fire teams. 
I forget exactly why. Increases counterattack chance. I mean, he has taunt and everything. Oh, that's right. He he increases elemental disadvantages. Elemental disadvantages in this game. There's only a couple units that do it. Um, so normally, like, fire does more damage to win. 30% more damage. But you can increase that. And in his case, if you get it maxed, you can increase that to 80%. So it'll significantly increase the DPS of uh, your attack damage whenever you can get that up. And then he has lots of tanky and help buff the team and help the team sustain. He also grants strike preparation, which is an instant crit on uh, the next turn for all allies. And he gives focus power, so it increases single target DPS. So there's lots of single target uh, DPSers in fire, such as Cynthia, Morgan, etc. So Leafa. So that, that'd be a pretty amazing thing as well. So yeah, Lionel's actually worth building, and you can argue he's one of the top tier tanks, but not like the the top tier tank, unfortunately. But David, he has a couple tricks. He's a pretty good unit. Um, I wouldn't put him as top top tier personally, but maybe it's changed since I played. Junia, Junia is basically really useful for the Lily advent. Uh, Lily, from what I've heard, is actually not that useful, so. Your results may vary. Amelia, um, she does pretty good deeps for wind. I believe she has something penetration damage on everything along with... If someone has a shield, I remember she does significantly more damage. So depending on if you're fighting someone with shields, she can be really good. She's also really good in Loli's dungeon. You know, I just got a bill. I have no idea about bill. Look at her. Oh, she's one of the freeze meta heroes. Okay, yeah, I've heard about her. Um, so the thing about Belle is in PvP, whenever a water ally attacks with her leadership, they have a 50% chance to freeze. Freeze is a debuff that's basically a stun, but um, a little bit different. Um, they're still stunned, but you can also exploit freeze with some units to get uh, increased damage on crits or what have you. So if you're making one of the PvP freeze teams, I hear Bell's really good for that. Never used her myself, so I don't know much about her, but that's just what I've heard. Sarah, I got no idea. Margarita, I got no idea. All these heroes, I got no idea, except Momo. Momo is the top tier light DPS at the moment, I know that. Not sure why, I don't have one myself. But every time I've seen her or I've used a friend unit, Momo does hit hella hard, single target DPS. So, ignore defense on her three. Ignore defense on her two. Ignore defense on her one. So, yeah. And she has a couple tricks that give her, like, Veil of Phantasm so she can't get immediately killed at the beginning. Also puts Brand on units. That's good. Brand increases damage taken by those units. <clears throat> And she has anti-evade. So there you go. So yeah, I know that she's number one DPS. These other units, they've all been added since I played. So I'm sorry, I can't really speak on them much until I, uh, until I get them for myself. Now, collaboration units. Right now, they got the RWBY going on. Um, most useful units right now, Zhao's, or excuse me, Yang's really good uh, counterattack meta. Blake, really good DPS, dark DPS. Cinderfall, actually very useful. Um, trying to remember. Oh yeah, so she has a Fall Maiden buff that uh, messes with her depending on what's going on. Disable Resolve for two turns. So a pretty useful unit right there. Um, Weiss is as powerful as you get her two. Her two. The cool thing about Weiss is she can switch back and forth between being really good single target DPS or really good AOE DPS. Uh, you can watch my video for more moves on that. Ruby's actually really good too. Just hits super hard on everything. So if you happen to see this video within the next, I believe, 12 days, uh, that's kind of how those units go. Now, as far as the other units, the only ones I know of, 
uh, Fairy Tail, Wendy Marvel, if you're using a friend units, God tier as far as uh, support goes, especially for your win teams. Lucy, she can be a really good DPS for Holy, not quite top tier. Natsu, really good fire DPS, not quite top tier. Uh, as far as the other two, not super sure on them. And then Full Metal Alchemist, from what I know, Alphonse. Really good tank because he puts up a. Uh, what's it called? Like a damage shield? Not sure, it must be the Transmute Circle. Well, anyways, I just know he gets a damage shield and he taunts everybody and then they beat themselves to death. A la Paladin Aura from Diablo. So that's all I know about those heroes. Now, real quick, I'll go into some SRs that are serviceable and really good. Um, each of these SRs at the top, Dio, Leona, and Lydia. Lydia, once you get her costume from her epic quest, is actually top tier support in the game. Uh, just lots of stuff, a resurrection on a short cooldown, as well as a AoE heal and a defense buff, damage reduction. Good unit. Leona actually becomes a really good wind DPS when you get her costume. Theo becomes a really good fire DPS when you get his costume. So you should be building all three of these heroes and keep your dupes of them. Don't uh, get rid of them for any reason until you max them at least. Now, as far as other units that are semi-useful, um, Esmeralda, I remember, actually hits pretty hard for an SR uh, holy unit. Cordelia, like I was saying, she's a serviceable tank if you get uh, if you go do the Tayo dungeon. She can actually tank Tayo pretty much. We were all using Cordelia to tank Tayo before Ian became available. Now Ian's there, so you don't necessarily need Cordelia, but if you don't have an Ian, use Cordelia. Uh, Ika's still really good in niche teams uh, because her ulti increases max HP by 50% for the party once you scaled up all the way. So you can use that along with her two for damage reduction and she still does pretty good for uh, some water teams and some PvP comps. Uh, as far as we go here, let's see. I'm only mentioning the ones I know are very meta at the moment. Well, I guess that's it. I thought there was a couple more. Oh yeah, there is one more I need to get to. Uh, our unit. Um, Vlad. Whenever we find Vlad. There he is. Vladdy also has an epic quest. So keep your dupes of Vladdy. It's very easy to get rid of his dupes because he's an R. But uh, once he gets his costume... He gets a adrenaline buff to help him start going faster. His bleeds become a little bit more ridiculous. And he has Looming Death now on his two, which was a thing that wasn't there before. So he becomes a really good uh, dark hybrid. So definitely they keep your Vlads. And that's pretty much it, guys, as far as units that I know to be uh, useful. So if you get any combination of any of the ones I mentioned... Uh, you know, hopefully this video helps you out a little bit. I'm going to try to start making some more KC guides as I've gotten back into the game. I still got a lot to learn, as you can see, but uh, I know enough now to help out, especially newer players. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, if you don't know me, I'm Showtime Doctor, Showtime DR. Um, my YouTube, you can hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Also, you can check the title info. There's a link to the Discord. We got a KC tab that's been bustling lately, as well as a link to my Twitch. I stream this game on occasion. So if you feel like it, check it out. And that'll be it for me. I'll catch you guys later on. Have a great day.